folks, welcome back to the HS Tech Channel. In this video, we're going to learn how to program MVS Kicks, specifically a version that's available on an old version of MVS ESA that I got running here, which is itself actually a version of OS 390. But everything is pretty much the same as it is nowadays on ZOS. Now, before we get started, I'm going to mention I have full control over the system. This is my little silly little goofy mainframe that I run for fun and there is no security on this thing whatsoever. So if you're in the real world and you're like at work and like, ooh, how do I program kicks? And you're watching this video, contact your systems programmer because some of the things I'm gonna do on here, you're not gonna be able to do. So let's go ahead and get started. So go ahead and log in to TSO as you normally do and go ahead and invoke ISPF. Now, before we do anything, we need to allocate two data sets. We need to allocate a data set for our source code. We need to allocate a data set for our load library which will actually hold the members. Now, I've actually already got these allocated, uh, but you would normally do it with three and then two, and then you would do A, but because I've already got it allocated, I'll just do the demonstration of these. So I have this sitting on this volume, and of course the source data set member here needs to have, as usual, uh, fixed and then 80 for the record length, although you can use whatever record length you want, although you probably should use 80 by convention. And then also, make sure you've got a load library as well. Now, the record length for a load library should be zero, but I somehow slipped up and it has a record length of 80. But the most important thing about a load library on MVS is it needs to be record format U. And the block size, well, for some reason, this block size is a little bit too big. If you look back at the block size of this, this is the correct block size you want to use for a 3390. Okay, so now that you have your data sets allocated, before we do anything else, we need to tell Kix that we want to use that load library data set we allocated that can find the programs in that. Because Kix is basically, it's not very smart at finding programs. At the same time, it's also very smart at finding programs. It will search all the open data sets that it's been told are places where it can find programs and maps, and it's like, okay, well, there's our program that we are trying to run, and you'll see what all that means in a moment. But what we need to do is we need to locate the Kix startup procedure. Now, of course, again, I'm the system admin on this particular machine. I am the systems programmer, so I can do whatever I want. But in this case, it's in sys1.proclib. And if we do locate Kix A, here it is. Now, if you edit this, I know it looks like a mess, but scroll down until you see just what you're looking for. Ah, I went too far. DFHRPL. Here it is. This right here is the thing that tells Kix where it's looking. And so you have a bunch of data sets. So obviously here's the Kix built-in SDFH load libraries. It's, it needs to be able to find itself. Here's our language environment stuff, language environment, GDDM. This is for another project that I'll demonstrate in the future. And then this right here is the data set we just allocated. Now note that you do have to actually type this in and make sure that if it's not catalog, you specify the volume and all that stuff. But in this case, it's cataloged on a master catalog. Of course, if it's not master catalog, you do volume or serial equals, whatever, but we don't actually need to do that. So we'll go ahead and get out of that. And now we can actually get down to the meat and potatoes of this. So also, as you probably saw in a moment ago, I do have another kicks terminal open. Keep that on hand because you're going to need that. Now I have, oh, that's not it. I have on my hand here a couple of examples. Uh, I have two example programs and I have an example map and then I have the JCL for all of it. Now, in true mainframe fashion, we're going to do this all in COBOL. I can do an assembly language tutorial, but we'd be here all day. So, let's go ahead and look at this basic one here. This is a Kix Hello World. Now, this is all you really have to do. However, do note that you do have to have, this is like the bare minimum. You can probably sum it down a little bit, but I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, you can probably put a hardcore or a hard-coded string in there, rather than having to sit here and do this the ridiculous way. So you could hard code that string, but this is all I need to do. So we start, we're going to load up our string into this variable here. We're going to put 15 for the string length, because remember, no null terminated string, so this isn't Unix. We're going to tell Kix, okay, we want to send text from here, length that, and then we're done. These are going to get macro processed, all right? These exec blocks are going to be macro processed by our Kix macro processor, if you will. Now, it's pretty ridiculous, but, you know, this is hard. You'll understand it eventually. Exit kicks return means we're done, and then stop run. Okay, technically you can leave this off, but you know it's like when you're writing an assembly program on on Unix, you need to return anyways, even if you exit or use the exit syscall. So there we go. That's the basic example. 
Now, here's where it gets actually really difficult. You gotta understand this JCL. This is a nightmare, but it's not that hard. All right, so this is probably something you're gonna wanna copy paste. I encourage you to actually hand type it in because you may remember it better that way. So let's go ahead and walk through this. Now, if you're familiar with MVS, now this isn't a generic MVS tutorial, you know, here's your job card. In this case, we're going to uh, message class H, which on my system is the spool, the held class. This right here, okay, this is where things start to get different. I have an ancient version of Kix transaction server on here. You're probably wondering how in the world do I find what this is supposed to be? Because we go on your system, you go to ISPF option 3.4, and you plug in kixcs13.kix.sh, blah, 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 blah. You go like, ooh, data not found. Well, here's how you find that. We'll back out of this for a moment. Just do star star dot df or sdfh star, and that will expose to you all of the Kix data sets. And once you figure out what the HLQ is, the high level qualifier, remember that because you're going to need to know it. It's going to keep showing up. So if we go back to our example here, boom, here's our high level qualifier. However, before we can even type that, we have to type where we're fetching these procedures from because this right here executes a job procedure. So what does this mean? Proglib. This is the load library that's going to drop the compiled program into after it's been linked. This right here, this is a high level qualifier. This right here is, again, the same destination library. This is the high-level qualifier of the COBOL compiler. So we're probably going to need to find that as well, and we're going to go look at that next. And then this is the high-level qualifier for the uh, language runtime environment, or just language environment. Okay, this right here, this right here is the translator, sysin. So this right here is your data set that has your source code in it, and as you remember, it's kicks high from a moment ago. Syslib, this right here is where you may have any copybooks. If you come from the Unix world, a copybook is a C header. Now, this right here specifies stuff for the linker. We want this to be a reentrant executable or a reentrant module, and then this is the final name of it. And then this right here is going to go here because remember, this is a partition data set, but we didn't specify it like this. We specified it like this. So the linker is going to say, okay, yeah, throw this in here. Boom. Pretty standard linker stuff if you've ever driven the MVS linker before. Now, let's go find that COBOL compiler. So again, your data set names may be different. So to find this, we do star star dot S-I-G-Y comp. And that is the name of the compiler. Because look at that, I got a ton of different compilers on here. I have uh, VS COBOL, actually no, I have COBOL VS, I have OSU90 and VM COBOL, VS COBOL 2, and then ZOS COBOL 1.4. So any of these you could use and they would all probably be able to compile that Kix program, but we're just gonna use the one that I, oops, sorry, it's the wrong number, we're not there yet. The one that I have on here by default. Okay, so once you've done this, go ahead and do submit. And now if you know the clever trick here, if you have SDSF, you can do M equals N comma five comma ST, and that will run SDSF. Go down here and look at this. All right, so, you probably need to familiarize yourself with how to work through this job output. So just go down here and just look for errors. Now this of course is an assembly program, so we're going to invoke, well first we're going to use the command language translator, and then it's going to invoke the, why did I say assembly program? Sorry, this is a COBOL program. So it's going to invoke the command language translator, which by the way, if you program in other languages like C or even Java, you're still going to have those exact statements. So I know it's going to look weird writing a C program that looks like a COBOL program, but you know, here we are. This is Kix. This is the uh, transaction processing system of hard knocks. Okay, the resonant. Okay, well, this is just in here anyways. So, boom, boom, boom. Believe it or not, this is actually a mixed case now. <laughs> okay, well, that's just the source code listening, and I can see we're looking at the uh, linker down here. Uh, sorry, that's the compiler. We're getting, there's the linker, or as they call it, the binder. And we're just gonna make sure everything's good. Just keep looking, boom. So if you see the uh, message summary report, then that means it worked. If it didn't work, scroll back up because the linker won't run. It'll just be the compiler. It'll just be the command translator. So each, if there's a error in one of the steps, the subsequent step isn't gonna be ran. Now you're probably wondering, well, how in the world did you get to SDSF so quickly? If that doesn't work, go back to your main menu after you type submit on that editor and go to M5 uh, 
assuming you have SCSF, def SCSF defined and assuming your shop has the M option as the uh, IBM's product panel and then go to ST. Scroll down to the bottom and then bam, there it is. And S. All right, now let's take a look at some stuff. Let's go and take a look back at our load library. And you may notice there is now something in here. Note that it is a 31-bit program because we compiled it with a somewhat modern Cobalt compiler. And if we browse it, boom, it's a program. All right, now let's get this crammed into Kicks. So abandon ISPF and go over to Kicks. Now, again, the system has security completely disabled, so I can right away, I can run anything I want. I can even shut down Kicks right here. So after you do L Kicks on your login screen, assuming that's what your login screen looks like, it may not be. So figure out how to get into Kicks somehow. Just clear the screen. You may need to do CESN, but of course, security is not active. I can't sign on. At this point, this is this may be where you can't do stuff. Maybe your Kicks account doesn't have the appropriate permissions, but I have the appropriate permissions. I'm the sysprog, so I can do whatever. Go ahead and do CEDA define program kicks high group kicks test. Okay, so what this is gonna do, I know this is pretty complicated because you see a ton of junk when you do this. We're gonna define a program. This is telling kicks. We somewhere in those load library concatenations, there's a program called kicks high. We just looked at it, it's in that load library. It's the one with all the binary data in it. And then we're gonna cram it into group kicks test. Now kicks is a group oriented system, meaning you can add remove groups and it's basically a way to just, well, it groups everything. So it's not like one giant monolithic mess. If you see this right here, group created and define successful, that means you're good. So now we can back type over this. Now we can do define transaction We'll say hello, and then this is the actual four letter transaction or the kicks command, if you will, that you're going to type in on a blank screen. And then we want this to call program kicks high, and then of course we want it to be in group kicks test. Okay, define successful. Now, if you hit enter, it will give you like a menu of stuff, and it doesn't sound really that useful. And now we can install group kicks test. Install successful. Press F3 to get out of this, and then clear your screen, and type the name of the transaction we just plugged in. Boom! We now have a somewhat functional kicks program. Now, all this does is just bolts and junk out on the screen, so nothing else is really going to work here. So, at this point, we can move on. So that right there, that was just a basic example. Now, we'll go back over to our ISPF session, and now we're going to look at the this is where things actually get difficult. So if you want to do anything with kicks, you're going to want to be able to use maps unless you're doing some crazy TCP IP network socket stuff, which by the way, TCP IP does work under kicks, uh, assuming you're using C, but this video is not covering C programming in kicks. This is just COBOL and maps. So let's look at a map. First off, what in the world is a map? Well, it's this. Now I will say this is generated by an amazing program called uh, ANSI2BMS. If you plug that in and search GitHub for it, you'll find it. It's a Python script that will generate BMS maps from ANSI art. Yes, if you have like like those fancy BBS uh, graphic screens, you remember those back in the bad old days? If you use like Mobius to edit those, you can slam that through ANSI2BMS and bam, you get a map out of it. So here's what we got. As you can see, this is in fact auto-generated. Now there's a lot of things in here. For one, there's like four of the same thing here. Well, there's three, but there's going to be four. What does it all mean? Okay, this right here is just the file name, or I'm sorry, the member name, if you want to be all proper. This right here is just the name of this whole thing. You can change this to whatever you want. This right here is the name of one of the maps in this map set, because remember, this is the whole thing. This is just the map set. Or, sorry, this is the map set. This is just one map. And of course, these are all assembler macros. This whole thing is, in fact, an assembler program. So you can go through here and you can specify all the fields. And yes, these are actually fields and you can type over them. But it specifies the color because we want a fancy RG, well, I guess RGYB because we do have a yellow text in here as well. And then we're done and there's no more uh, maps in this map set. But if you have 
a single map set that has like a billion maps in it, it's a lot faster to assemble than just one. Okay, so once you've made your maps, and this is really not that tricky to do, this of course is your coordinates on the screen, this is how many characters are in the field, and then this is normal and protected, so we can't type over this, if you got off prot, you'd be able to type over it, and you'd be able to tab to this, it's important. You see how I can tab around on my 3270 terminal? That's because the terminal knows, oh there's fields here. So keep that in mind, because that's how you'll be able to add input and stuff. Okay, now let's get this, I guess, assembled. So this right here is the clunkiest JCL. It's the shortest, but it's also the hardest. So again, here's our job card. This is where we're fetching out our procedures from. If you don't have this in the system-wide proclib, which you, you might, uh, your system programmer, when they installed Kicks for you, they probably actually put this into the system-wide uh, JCL procedure library concatenation. So yeah, probably don't actually have to type this, but it's good just to be sure. I don't have it in here because I just have a basic JES2 install. Okay. So here's our compile step. We're gonna execute DFH maps. This right here is the library that our binary of the map, because yes, it does, in fact, a simple program, we're gonna make a binary, it's gotta go somewhere. So this is where we're putting it. This right here is where the copy book is gonna go, okay? Uh, think about it like this. When you generate your map, it's gonna produce a copy book because we need something in our COBOL program so that we know where all the fields are. So if we type something in on the screen, push enter, and our COBOL program reads data that we typed into the screen, we need to be able to get that. And we get that by pulling stuff out of variables that are specified in a copybook. So a copybook is basically a C header for you C programmers that got shoveled in the mainframe operation. <laughs> and then this right here is the target map name. This right here is the source code. So we're pulling from here, as you know, so we're good to go. So go ahead and submit this, and then we'll get out of here and we'll go to SCSF. Go down here to the bottom, and we'll show this. Now this may take a moment to run uh, because it does reference the same data set twice. So there may be a bit of a race condition there, but don't worry, it'll solve it every time. All right, we'll just go through here. You can see how long this procedure expands out to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All this really does is just run high level assembler over it. And then there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it'll link it. So there we go. Actually, it will not link it. It just produces an object. So there we go. Now we need to take a look at our data sets because some things have changed. If we go look at our load library data set, we're now going to see that there is a AMODE24 uh, program in here. Bam. Actually, I said it didn't get linked, but as you can see, it is clearly linked. Oh, I'm sorry, wrong key. So we have this, but we also have something new in our source library. Boom. This right here is our copy book. And this right here says, here's our fields. Now, of course, we don't actually have any fields in here, but these last letters here are reserved. So keep your names exactly at seven characters at the most is a good recommended practice, especially if you're like doing retro kicks programming on some ancient version of kicks VS, this will be important. All right, so now we're gonna look at our program that's gonna show our map on the screen. In our working storage section, you need to copy in our test map, which of course just got cranked out by the uh, procedure that we just did here. So looking at this here, it's vital that you have that in. Okay, so now this is where we send our map. This is one of the maps within the whole map set. And map set, this is the actual binary that gets dropped into your load library. So you can name the source whatever you want. The only reason why I called it test maps, plural, is because I didn't want it to name fight with a copy book. And I wanted it to be slightly different, okay? So there you go. Yeah, I know there's test maps and there's test maps. Yeah, I know it's a mess, but it will eventually make sense in the end. So let's take a, let's keep looking at this because we're not quite done looking at it. And of course you do your return, your end exec, and then you do your stop run, your stop run where you get out of that. All right, so now let's look at the JCL that actually does this. So of course we have Cobb JCL 2 the sequel. 
Now, same old, same old, except this time, of course, we've got things slightly renamed. The only thing that's renamed is Show Math from Kicks High. Other than that, you can just copy and paste. You know, JCL was just copy paste program. All right, so we'll go ahead and, I don't know, oops, I'm pushing the wrong key here. So we do need to submit this. Hopefully we don't get any errors out of this. Okay, so, oh yeah, also, thank goodness we're commenting this, so it'll actually tell you what these things are. Yeah, I don't really like this explanation. It's not really that useful. But there we go. Keep on scrolling. Yeah, 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 looks good. All right, there's our linker options. Well, we saw the linker, so that means we're good. All right, let's go take a look at our load library and see that it's in there. So now we have a total of three things in here. We have two programs and one map. Boom, as you can see, this one's a little bit longer, but not by much. Now, flip back over to Kicks. We're gonna do some more stuff. First, we're gonna CEDA display group Kicks test. So we already have two things in here, so we're gonna add some more. So CEDA define map. And remember, if we go back here and we look in our load library, this is the map. Oops, I was hovering over a button there on the ribbon that you can't see. All right. All right, we've got a program. Uh, we'll say SHMP show map. There you go. That's really as difficult as it gets. Is this right here is probably the ultimate, or the ultimately difficult thing about Kicks is understanding how to go about doing stuff. The actual programming stuff is easy. You can find Kicks examples all over the internet. If you need a good Kicks example, look up the Dogecoin Kicks Bank. It's made by the same guy that wrote ANSI to BMS, and he actually wrote that for the Dogecoin Kicks Bank. I know it's kind of goofy and silly, and yeah, whatever. But it, uh, it's a good example nonetheless. And also, you can find a book called Kicks for the COBOL Programmer. Uh, I don't know who wrote it, but it's really good. You can find a PDF of it probably somewhere on archive.org. I highly recommend that as well. And there's a few other resources as well. Of course, read your IBM manuals. I know it's cliche, but seriously, read them manuals because you certainly need them. But hopefully, this is, hopefully you can understand the maps thing. And in any subsequent Kicks programming videos, we're going to look at actually doing stuff with Kicks, and we're also going to look at file access, file control, and of course that's going to require knowledge of vSAM, but you can use sequential data sets under Kicks if you are so inclined, and just for fun we may look at networking, but no promises on that. Alright, good luck out there, be safe, and don't blow up your mainframe.